Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This one is all about teeny tiny titans and I'm really excited to test out a scheme that I'm going to transpose to bigger models in the future. Let's get going. So as mentioned today we're going to be hobbying on a Warham Titan, specifically a tiny baby one. I've kicked this guy out with an Ursus Claw and a Shot Glance, I don't know much about the rules, apparently they're not great, I don't care, it's a stabby titan because I've got a shooty army. I started off by priming everything in Ghoul Grey which is Colour Forge's equivalent to Grey Seer, so if you want a slightly cheaper and larger alternative, this is a good choice. It covered really nicely and that allowed me, after a very short amount of time waiting for it to dry, to start adding the black base coat to the endoskeleton. Don't know why I clarified endoskeleton, it's, it's the normal skeleton we all think of. Anyway, I used black legion contrast paint here to allow me to get a good foundation ready for the metallics. Painting metallics over grey or white primer is always a little bit see-through and a bit annoying. Over a black, it's much more forgiving. As you'll see, I started adding my classic dark aluminium at this point and it covered really nicely and the skeleton was done very quickly. The scheme I'm going to be working on today is a nice quartered scheme using blue and white, hence the primer. This is a scheme I thought would be a really nice idea to try out on this little baby titan so I can transfer it to some bigger knights in the future. Using Cantor blue, which is my favourite blue that Citadel do, I started marking out the areas that I wanted to be blue. I used the rivets and recesses that are already built into the detailing of the armour to help me decide where this was going to start and end. It basically cuts the model in half quite nicely for us. Even though I am quartering, I'm not strictly following the quartering guidelines, so I will be adding some blue to the areas that would have previously been white, and a bit of white to the areas that have been blue. The best example is the two little top joints for the weapons where I've added a bit more blue, and then I've also added half blue down on both legs. My explanation may not make much sense, but when you see the model, you'll understand. I then broke out Retributor armor from Citadel and thinned down with a little bit of contrast medium because it's quite a dry paint and went all over all of the trims around the model. Whilst that dried, I wanted to darken down the lower areas of these big panels, so I thinned down some Leviathan blue, also with contrast medium, you can also use water, that's fine, and just glazed it into the bottom areas. I then also used some Cantor Blue thinned down to make those areas blend a bit better, but I didn't film that part because it was very touch and go. I wasn't sure if I liked it. Next up was using some Tamiya Black Panel Liner. This stuff is amazing and it runs into all the recesses. If you want a nice, super clean finish, gloss varnish the model beforehand. Mine was a tiny bit messy, but I don't mind. It's a giant Warhound Titan. The model's really small, but you know, in general, it's a giant Warhound Titan. Next up, my favourite part, highlighting. I used Lotherm Blue all over the blue areas and AK Silver Grey all over the white areas and did some nice sharp highlights. This is where the model really started to pop. Before this stage, I wasn't too keen on it and thought maybe I'd made some mistakes along the way, but it turns out once you've added the highlights and everything comes together, you can see the final image, or at least the beginnings of. By mistakes, I'm not talking about the classic, you know, brush mistake, those happen all the time anyway, but mistakes in the where I placed the colours, the colours I'd chosen and so on. Once the highlights and the shading goes in, I can really start to see it as a cohesive whole, so stick with it. And this is exactly why we paint test models, because this is my test model for this scheme. I don't want to buy a giant Imperial Knight, paint this scheme, realise I hate it, have to restart. At least on this guy, he's smaller than a Dreadnought. The current clip that we're looking at is also a great example of what happens when you don't gloss varnish before adding your Tamiya panel liner. I don't mind this, it's a giant titan, it's allowed to be a little bit dirty, but if you want a super clean result then I do recommend that gloss varnish beforehand, or alternatively a slightly longer method of using thin down black legion and doing it manually, going into all the recesses. This is something I personally already do on many of my Space Marine armies, my Blood Angels, Salamanders and Crimson Fists, just to name a few, but it is quite time consuming, so on a model that's this large, bearing in mind it's only the size of a Dreadnought, but I'm going to be replicating this on a very large knight in the future, I do recommend going the easier route. So just as always, do as I say, not as I do, gloss varnish the miniature. I don't mind the way this looks, but if you do, that's the way out of it. You might have just seen there, I used corn red on the eyes and I also used it for this little shield on top, which is a really nice detail. 
I kept this very simple. I've gone mad on heraldry in the past on my void walkers, so I didn't want to do that again here. So just a nice little chevron was enough for me. If you would like to see some crazy heraldry, I've linked something in the top right. The main body of the Titan is now done and it's just time to add some of those details. I'm going to be painting all the parchment in the standard formula you've seen me use on all the videos, steel lead and drab, Xandri dust, bit of your shabdu bone, seraphim sepia wash. I won't labour on it too long. Instead what I want to talk about here is that I'm leaving the model quite clean, but this is where I'd be going in after this step to add loads of cool battle damage. If you want to know a bit more about battle damaging vehicles then you can see in the top right another video linked that should be very useful or at least entertaining for you. I always enjoy this stage of the model where we're adding the final details. It feels like the model is basically done and we're just making it pop even more. If you wanted to add some words to these it's worth noting that both the banners aren't linked in the center, at least not as I could tell, so you'd have to have two separate words, so I just didn't bother in the end. I did add a little bit of black text to the little shield on top though because I thought it looked cool. I did the usual and added null oil all over the metallic parts to dull them down a little bit and I didn't highlight from here. You absolutely can, I just chose not to on a model this size. I'd also noticed that I'd missed a few of the pipes on the back near the vents so I added some black legion over that and highlighted with a little bit of dawnstone off camera. Finally was the base where I used Panzer Grey straight from the pot all over the road areas and then used some Rune Lord Brass all over the metallic areas. This is simply a straight rip from my Legions Imperialis video, now also linked in the top right, why not? Because I wanted this guy to match the army that I've already painted. It's worth talking about the bases that come in the Legions Imperialis starter kit. They're not the same as the other bases you would have seen Games Workshop produce. I might have alluded this a little bit in my Legions Imperialis video, but there's a lot to talk about with them in the, firstly, the obvious, they're a lot thinner. But secondly, they have a lot of printed detail on, so you're a little bit locked into what you can paint. Luckily, it's a little bit generic in that it could be a road, it could be metal plating, it could be a gantry, so you do have some options that way. But with the way that things like texture paste and snow would look on models this size, specifically I'm here thinking about the infantry, the bases kind of make sense. So yes, you are a little bit locked in. I do believe that other companies, if not Games Workshop themselves, will add different variations on these bases in the future. So you can put them in deserts and in, you know, Snow Planet, Hoth, whatever. But for now, with this starter kit, we are locked into the road and metal plating kind of thing. I don't personally mind, but if you do care about that, it's worth knowing. This was a really fun little project. This guy isn't much bigger than the old box dreads, so if you're thinking about picking one up, I do recommend it. Even just for a little display piece, because there's something about a teeny tiny titan that's very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I've been Sam. See you next time.